Well, in this video, I want to have a look at a might be an unusual topic: uh, cigar store, uh, well, cigar box art, and uh, just I'm cleaning out some old folders. But I uh, pay attention. There's quite a uh, it, well, it's an interesting topic, and and how prevalent this are, especially from Cuba, which is a very has a very rich Masonic um, history to it. So, especially Cuban cigars, but. Uh, well, for instance, uh, Lira, Lira of a Constellation, but in, for instance, on the bottom right, that's from the Newcastle Masonic Centre, and on the bottom left is from one of the um, set sculpture sets at the QVB, the QVB in Sydney and Newcastle. I've done videos on those. Again, it's one of, you know, by the weights, by the measures, by the symbols, it's um, overflowing. Uh, Arafusa, again in the Hyde Park video and the Fraser Fountain just outside St. Mary's, lots of symbols uh, uh, throughout it, but for instance, uh, being a fountain, Arafusa, Arafusa being uh, like a water nymph, um, this connection to um, Greek mythology, and you see this is one of the uh, continuing patterns, well, and also we have the uh, water nymph um, cigar box. But even the rays of the sun, so that's another little symbol you got there, and even the curls of the wave, if you're not, they're not like a, a typical wave, but that's just one of these flowing patterns that you'll see uh, f throughout the architecture symbolism, and it carries through, and um, even the red is an uh, interesting uh, choice, and Solaris. Uh, well, you, this is a, um, well, for instance, on the inside, I did one just the other day on the Pyramid of Cestius and the images on the inside there, again, going back to ancient times. So these are symbols that have been passed on and that their meanings have, have been lost, but they're very much connected with Freemasons, uh, Rosicrucians, uh, etc. Now, this one might not be so uh, obvious right off the bat, but it's a representation of Isis. Now, even the peacock feathers and this you know the slight indication of the eye there and even the way she's holding the globe this is something that you'll see repeated in many other um, sculptures but now uh, back to Sydney so you have the Hyde Park obelisk uh, the the winged disc the snakes and it's being flanked uh, guarded by sphinxes there at the top so as we move to our next picture, we'll see how the uh, this is also being a well, cigar art. Uh, it's, it's, it's you know it's in, so if you see there, see the wings and the snakes um, there again. It's a representation of Isis and the sphinxes there protecting. Now she's even the way she's pointing to the um, snakes on her forehead and 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 one breast exposed. That's like a common symbol, especially connected to uh, the Phrygian cap and Lady Liberty. Uh, Jupiter, um, no surprise there. The Sky Guide, the uh, lightning, um, is the, you know his weapon. So, for instance, Hades had the helmet. Neptune has a trident, and Jupiter has the lightning bolts. And again, this is one of the common symbols. So, I'm just using Sydney and Australia as a framework, but you could pick any of these very uh, esoteric-based uh, cities. So, for instance, the Sky Guide, Jupiter, and just there behind the um, the wings there, you'll see the little lightning bolts pointing out. So. Um, and uh, that's from the GPO building, and this is again overflowing with uh, Mercury, Neptune, uh, Ceres, uh, Athena, Medusa. They're, they're, you know, they're all there. Also, like another one is the AWA building. Now, the AWA buildings actually feature. It was on TV the other night, but uh, it was you know um, in one of the important scenes in the Matrix when. Uh, Morpheus is rescued and getting carried away by the helicopter anyway. The AWA building is one of these featured buildings in there, but it's also very much um, with by weights, measures and symbols. Uh, the D D Detroit Queen um, brand. Now, there are a few others, but the most obvious one is a lady with the pink top just to the right-hand side. She's holding the Phrygian cap. This, uh, even not too long ago, I put a video on that. Now, even the little coins and the, uh, the symbols on the coins, but the, the, the important one there is the Phrygian cap. Uh, didn't have the brand name on this, but anyway, Columbus, see the doves there, uh, but also she, the important point is the cornucopia. Now, the lady in the centre right, even that rod she's holding, so if, if you've got a UK uh, penny and you see the Lady Victory, uh, Britannia, she's holding that rod as well, but the cornucopia, this, the horn of plenty. Uh, the sun rays from her head, and also on her left hand side we see the cornucopia again so this horn which is overflowing with fruit so um it's a uh, like 
Greco-Roman symbol, older than that. She's even got like a trident as well, which is a reference to um, Neptune and holding the olive branch. So, uh, But the cornucopia, so the AMP building in Newcastle um, has this on its uh, ornament. And of course, AMP founded by Thomas Sutcliffe Mort, which uh, is in statue in Sydney, which is a very important place. Uh, Freemason and the connection between the um, AMP, Australian Mutual Provident um, Society, and again, so the AMP building in Goulburn. Uh, again, you see, you see how the ladies holding the cornucopia there. Also, the, the newer AMP uh, building in Sydney also has, but it's more modernist sort of style, but it's very much um, connected and still carried through. Uh, El Ambar. Now, uh, the shields on either side, the important one, for instance, is the, well, she's got the cornucopia, she's also, there's a caduceus or the kundalini on the bottom left, uh, the anchor, and on the bottom right corner, also the anchor and that wheel. Uh, that's an important symbol, we'll get to it, but the anchor is very important, but so uh, the Lady of Commerce here in Sydney, um, outside the old uh, Commerce building, She's holding the caduceus, the horn of plenty. That's a symbol of Mercury. It's essentially one of the, you know, the hallmarks of the Hermetic Code. And also on the globe, again, but there's an anchor there. So just from that sheep, you'll see the anchor, and there's a better picture of it here. So uh, this reference now, it's got to um, faith, hope, and charity, for instance, is uh, the reference here. And this is a key point in um, Freemason tracing boards where you have... Uh, uh, the heart, the anchor, and now uh, the other symbol eludes me, but yeah, so that's one of the point, pointers to faith, hope, and charity. I've, I've got a video on that as well. Uh, Lady of Commerce on the Governor Philip statue. Now, you see that curl on the side? Anyway, that was a cornucopia. Um, so if you... Just and you can, now you can see that like, that swirl, which um, she's resting on. There's a cornucopia and the kundalini. So... Um, Another reference now, this one, uh, some more cigar art, again, you notice the anchor. Uh, what else have we got? There's a few, you know, a few other little symbols. Well, um, for instance, anyway, oh, sorry, the Wheel of Fortune in the centre and the uh, Kundalini that with the, the two snakes and the wings at the top there. But the wheel is the Wheel of, so the God Fortuna, um, that's the, like, uh, well, the guide of luck, it's one of those important, um, so just like the cornucopia is about plenty, you know, having plenty, your cup, your cup runneth over is, you know, a trans, uh, a, something you might be familiar with in that term, but the fortune is wheel, wheel of fortune, that's literally where the, the, the phrase comes from, and so again, you see like how this ancient uh, occult symbolism it is built into our language. It's built into our architecture, our symbolism, and and well, the GPO building in in Sydney uh, that's included the Zeus, included many other parts. But it's also you can see the the twin snakes about the rod and the uh, wings on the side. So that's a hermetic symbol, literally, as in her, that's the um, Hermes right there for you. And where next one is uh, well now again the anchor. If you see on the bottom right, she's holding the caduceus or kundalini, um, amongst other names. Notice the two pillars on either side, and she's holding an orb with an angel on the top. Again, in fairly recent video, I talked about the origin, uh, sort of the meaning of weights and measures, and how important is the symbols been carrying on. Well, here you see see the the uh, very important. Um, statue of uh, Zeus, uh, the sky god. He's carrying the rod, the scepter and the orb, which is a royal symbol. So, you know, royals, you see him carrying the, the orb, the weight, and the rod, the measure, weights and measures in here, and the power of it. Now, even, um, it's still carried on throughout Christianity. Now, this one, uh, the um, caduceus again, but also the seat, the Lady Cedar down with the red. She's also got the Phrygian cap on. So just like Lady Liberty in the U.S., Lady uh, the French symbol of the French Revolution. You'll see it in many countries. Are Cuban um, symbols as well. Uh, I've got a, the Phrygian cap. I did a video a while back on that. Uh, well, Mercury, sort of pretty obvious there. A um, few other, but even notice the sun rays in the background. But again, holding the Kundalini, he's got the traveler's cap on. That's the, another symbol of, and with the wings on it. So it's a mercurial symbol. And also the red robe. That's a, um, 
and the water nymph who's uh, the, who's pushing it forward uh, too easy mercury the wheel of fortune you see on her hat there's even a, you can see a trace of the wheel of fortune the uh, kundalini the caduceus either side and the lightning bolts another reference to uh, zeus again red uh, so these cigar boxes you know going back it's you know it's very very constant okay um caduceus the lady on the left and even notice the uh uh, what's the word? The, uh, the the medals, the badges. Well, we see the uh, or the Templar, or basically it's the Templar cross there, and even the coins again carry this symbolism through. Um, now, well, this is you know on the square, so he's on the level. This is a square house on the square again. A recent video I talked about the origins of weights and measures and how it's even come into our language. Um, the and so on the square on the level is also like a code phrase as well amongst other things uh well too easy fraternity the all seeing eye the um you know time wings of time the the compass and square there in the book the twin columns um the pillar of the terrestrial sphere and the celestial sphere even you can get a hint of our sun rays the all seeing eye emerging from under their fraternity and uh, blinding tie brand well again it's too easy the uh, the trowel with the G all seeing I from the G the sun rays coming out the um, the altar the uh, compass and square now even that uh, slipper has a uh, little bit of a tie but I won't go into that for the moment and even the olive branches on the outside so it's Anyway, hope you enjoyed. Have a good one. This the symbolism, you know, it still carries through. It's just been modernised a little bit, but it is pretty much um, everywhere, and and how often it pops up. So uh, especially back, basically after World War Two, basically sort of all slowly got eradicated. But anyway, with that, hope you enjoyed and have a good one. <laughs>